I'm a late 90s, early 2000s kid, so I see this title, and the first thing I think of... What is up, Flick fans? We stand in sync on this channel. That's what we do. Today we are talking the brand new romantic comedy on Amazon. At least it will be this weekend. I need you guys in the comments down below. Are you a fan of the genre? Is this a comedy that intrigues you? And is it good? We're going to talk about it. So dropping on Amazon just in time for Valentine's Day weekend on February 11th, newly dumped 30-somethings Peter and Emma team up to sabotage their execs' new relationships and win them back for good. Very good cast from Gina Rodriguez to Scott Eastwood, but the two that we're focused on here, Jenny Slate and Charlie Day. We'll talk about where we meet them in this film uh, in just a second, but in terms of the actors themselves, I am a fan of both. I think Charlie Day brings this manic type energy wherever he pops up, and most of the time it works. I'm not going to say it works 100% of the time, and I do love the fact that in this film, he scales that back just a little bit to create this rom-com leading man essence that I didn't know if he had in him. So I, I appreciate the fact that he did deliver in a performance so specific in a romantic comedy. Then you have Jenny Slade, a massive fan ever since first seeing her back in the Parks and Rec days, but of course she is so much more subdued here and pretty much everywhere uh, than when she was in that television series. Really like her character and just likability in general spewing out of her at the beginning. She's upset, he's upset, we meet them in the midst of their current relationships and everything seems to be going well for our two title characters, but for the others in the relationship, they're just, you can tell there's something off, and then the news is broken. So both of our leads, they're going through something super emotional, and it just so happens they cross paths and become really good friends. Does it go further than that? We'll just have to see. Now, that is one of my knocks on this film, and it's probably the most expected and obvious knock on any rom-com. It's like, yeah, you can kind of see where it's going. Now, I will say there were some nice surprises in terms of how they implement some of these genre-isms into this film. I felt it was something that is catering to that very specific audience, but you know who you are probably watching this review if you're interested in this movie, and you will probably like those very specific moments. Then you have the humor in the movie, and Charlie Day has a very specific style. His abilities are put on full display when he and someone else get themselves into a situation that maybe they shouldn't be in, but it all spawns from this plan that they come up with saying, okay, you're going to go to my ex and try to figure out a way to push them back to me, and I'm going to go to your ex. So we see a crossover, right? Where Peter befriends Emma's ex, and then Emma is trying to get Peter's ex to get back with him. So it is a very interesting and somewhat unexpected plan that uh, I found quite a few, more than a few moments where I was laughing and enjoying the comedy bits that would come from trying to, you know, go through with this plan, but at the same time, not get too close to the situation. And that's where a lot of the drama comes from. Peter and Emma's ex, Noah, they start to form this bond to where at the end of the day, it's kind of difficult to detach yourself from that. So uh, the spark of the drama in this rom-com was genuinely creative and there were some really good things to come from it. My biggest criticism, we gave our minor criticism, my biggest one is the fact that this movie is just way too long. A lot of it spawns from her trying to make Gina Rodriguez's new boyfriend jealous, so she gets into this musical theater where kids are performing, and one of the kids, they have this uh, bond and relationship, and that that's all fine and well, but it just didn't really go anywhere. It never made sense in the grand scheme of things. It provided one or two semi-cute scenes, but at the end of the day, it was kind of a waste of time. And that was a subplot. You cut that out, you save 10 to 15 minutes, I think the movie would have been a lot tighter. There were a handful of subplots that were just, they went on too long, and I thought the film should have been so much shorter than it actually was. That being said, while the comedy was occasionally hit and miss, it was more hit than miss, and that's definitely a good thing with a film like this, and it runs through the chemistry between Day and Slate. It's genuinely good, and you care about their relationship, whether that be a friendship or further, and I love that. That's exactly what you need with a movie like this. You let this star-studded cast take over and put you in the position you need to be in by the time you get to the end scene of the film. So I really like that. Speaking of that end scene, it was fine. They have something that comes back around. 
cute enough. I did need more personally, but I felt like they ended it in a nice spot for the characters. Before I give you my score, you watching this movie on Valentine's Day weekend. If you enjoyed this review and you want to support this channel, be sure to drop your thumbs up down below. It is a conventional story that takes advantage of its star-studded cast and features excellent chemistry between the two leads. I'm going positive. I'm going to 62%. It was cute. It was nice. Fans of the genre will really enjoy it. It's not necessarily one I would ever go back to, but uh, it did exactly what it needed to do as a romantic comedy. Thank you guys again for joining me. Come back. We have another review tomorrow for Marry Me along with Death on the Nile.